Hi everybody, I am back again to talk about a bag from Saddleback Leather. This is the front pocket pouch and I just find it so funny me doing these reviews. I never know when the next review is going to happen but be sure to subscribe so you're notified. Um, I'm enjoying this little adventure and hobby and the way this bag came into my life is kind of funny. Um, a woman on Facebook I'm part of this buy sell group on Facebook for Saddleback Leather and she emailed me and she's like, Danae, I know you don't have the front pocket pouch yet. I love that this community knows my collection almost as well as I do. So uh, she says, I know you don't have it. I know it's a new design. Would you like to borrow mine to do a review for YouTube? So me doing reviews for YouTube is just fun for myself. And I pushed back on her, I'm like, why don't you do a review? We would love to see what you have to say. And she was really sweet, and she gave me some compliments, and she insisted I did the review. So this is from her. I'm borrowing it. Um, I've had it for about a month, and then I will ship it back to her in Tennessee after this review. Um, isn't that really bizarre? I think it's very bizarre. So uh, I will model this bag for you, but I'll do that at the end of the video so I can readjust my camera and everything. And we'll just jump right in. So this is a relatively new design at Saddleback Leather. It retails for $169. This is the color tobacco. These are the boring parts, the specs, you know. And we have nine and a fourth high, eight and a half wide, and two and a fourth deep. And it weighs 2.1 pounds. So it is lighter. It's like a smaller, lighter bag in their whole collection of small, medium bags. Um, and I just, I took some notes, I always do, you see, there's lots to talk about today. I, and stay tuned because near the end of the video, I'm going to discuss kind of tobacco leather and that's kind of a hot button issue because it's not been, it hasn't been a consistent color coming from Saddleback Leather and it never has been consistent so it's almost consistently inconsistent. Can we make that a thing? Um, and I wanted to show my other bags and tobacco and how they differ from this bag. So stay tuned, that will be at the end. So if you want a review on this bag, continue watching. And if you want to just talk about tobacco leather, you can just watch or fast forward. So uh, again, the boring stuff, well, the exciting stuff. A hundred year warranty for this bag. And uh, they've changed their logo. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure you cannot see this from how far I am. But their old logo was in cursive. Well, there's an old, old logo, a scribe logo, and now this new logo. And the scribe logo was in cursive, um, just said Saddleback. And now it says uh, Saddleback Leather and Co. No, Saddleback Leather Co. for company. And it's all in caps. And it's kind of retro. It's very, very charming. I mean, I never complain about this company, but again, I like this logo. And I'd complain if there was something to complain about. So, I'm honest. Uh, okay, keep a walk through. We have an exterior pocket. Right now, my cell phone and a little wallet is in here. This is the um, <clears throat> front ID wallet from Saddleback Leather in Chestnut. And I shouldn't go into this, but I've seen a lot of women use this style of wallet nowadays. I've always been fine with this style, but it was more masculine. But now like Chanel and uh, Louis Vuitton are all doing this and I find it awesome because Saddleback Leather did it first. Or maybe one of the first. So we'll put that back in there. That was a little tangent. This top handle is so nice. It, you can go in and out of the car really, really easily. And it's again comfortable and very charming and I love top handles I mention that a lot in my videos there is no shoulder strap on the crossbody <clears throat> here let me get this in frame there is this it's very adjustable very very adjustable but there's no shoulder strap and it's not needed because this bag is only 2.1 pounds and it's just going to be light enough that you don't need a shoulder a shoulder pad maybe I could take this off for the review would that be helpful I'll put it on later. Say goodbye. I have my sunglasses on here because they didn't fit in the bag, but that's one way you can store your sunglasses when you're in a store. 
Uh, okay, so I will start opening up the bag. Yeah. Oh, this is a huge deal. They've improved the clasp. And um, that's, that's just a big deal because right here is my hobo. I've had it now for two years. Can you believe it? And I love this bag. It's probably one of my top three favorite bags. I almost sell it. I've almost sold it a couple times, but then I like put it in my hands and I use it a couple days. I'm like, nope, nope, nope. She can't leave. Excuse me. I hate it when people give their bags genders. This bag can't leave my collection. Okay, but one huge flaw to this bag that I'm fine with that a lot of people hate is the closure. And okay, I have like kind of a viewfinder above this camera, so I'm kind of making sure I'm in frame. But do you see that this? clasp swivels a lot just doing this. It is closed. And my trick to having this bag, to opening it, is having the metal stick out and always having that face out because it swivels 360, if that makes sense. So what happens is people hate it because it swivels behind the bag and it's harder to open and close when you're standing in Target and you can't get your bag open. So I'm fine with this design. I always have been but I do read a lot of reviews about this bag and they just people hate it. So Saddleback listened which is really cool that they listen to their customers and they improved the design. So now do you see this is not swiveling at all and you can open it and it does not swivel. It is not swiveling at all. They made that they made the clasp be able to be like fixed. They really just changed the whole buckle. They didn't really modify this buckle. They just found a new buckle. And so now the metal is always sticking out, if you can see here. And it is easy to open and close. Yeah? Okay. That's a big deal. And this is, I think, the first bag to have this updated design. Yes, it's the first bag. Okay, so we talked about the class, the logo. Um, wow, I'm really zooming through this pretty quick, but I wanted to compare this bag size capacity to some other bags. So just kind of, I'll just hold the bag side by side, and you can um, pause the YouTube if you want, and they'll be on the same plane. Let's see. Doo, doo, doo. I don't know if this will be helpful. I get a lot of requests on Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram, the DJH2000. I think my name sounds like a vacuum cleaner, but it's just how it's been. They ask me these comparison photos a lot. <clears throat> and I'm like, okay, okay. And some of my friends in town have different bags, so I'll go to their house and I'll say, can I put a side-by-side -side photo on my website with your bag? Oh, big elephant in the room. Check this guy out. This is the tablet bag from Saddleback Leather. And um, another woman said, hey, Danae, I saw that somebody sent you their bag to review this girl. I'm not going to say her name. I want to send you my bag. Can you do a review of my bag and then mail it back to me? I'm like, okay. Why not? <laughs> Isn't this weird? It's weird. It's weird, but it's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to be doing a full review on this bag, and this is in dark coffee brown. I've never even seen a bag in dark coffee brown before, but it's very pretty. So I'm just holding these up so you can have a size comparison. These ones have very, very similar sizes. Do you see how the closures or the straps are right here? Okay. So be, sub be sure to subscribe so you're notified when this bag review is up. I'm thinking <clears throat> that's attractive. I'm thinking maybe I'll do it today so you might see this outfit and I might do it uh, later. I haven't had tons of experience with this bag yet. I've had this one for a month and I've only had this one for a week. Okay. Um, before I put this one down, I will tell you, because they're so similar in size, um, we have the tablet bag is eight and three fourths high. The front pocket pouch 
is nine and a fourth high. This one's 11 wide. This one's eight and a half wide. This one's two and a fourth deep. This one's two and a half deep. And then, did I get that wrong? No, I didn't. Okay, and then this is 2.8 pounds and this is 2.1 pounds. So uh, I'll talk about this one a lot more in its designated video. All right, goodbye. And then here's the pouch, or this is the book bag, excuse me. And this one I've used a ton, a ton, a ton. I've had this for a couple months and this has gone on a lot of trips with me. I'm a big fan of this one. So here's the size comparison. I took the straps off for now. Can you see? Maybe I'll run through the specs on this one too. Okay, so let's do this again. It's just not easy doing reviews, so be nice. But I feel kind of like I'm sounding boring right now. All right, let's see. This is seven and three fourths high, nine and a fourth high, nine and a half wide, eight and a half wide, two and a half deep. Two and a fourth deep, 1.65 pounds, 2.1 pounds. So for weight, it would go book bag is the lightest, then the front pocket pouch, then the tablet bag. Do you know on like Best Buy where you can like select like something you're gonna buy and cross compare it to other products and then you can look at the specs, you know? Like they have that on Apple too for like iPads and stuff. I feel like Saddleback needs this like cross compare, like analyzing sheet, but I'm dreaming. Okay, I'm gonna put this one away and let's jump into what's actually in this bag. Uh, I have my sunglasses just on the side like this. In the back wallet, or in the back pocket, I have my cell phone. Do you guys remember when I used to videotape all these with my cell phone? And the color and the lighting was horrible. I got a fun camera to use now for my videos. Um, little front ID wallet. Now it's empty. We'll jump right in. This lining is the suede pigskin, which is softer. It has more of a texture, and this is what all their bags are going to start having. And I like it. I like the feel of it. Um, excuse me. So on top we have some winter gloves. And I'm going to put a couple different things in here, but this is what one combination looks like. The mini iPad does fit in the front pouch. But one sad thing is when you use a gadget sleeve, which is meant for the iPad, ta-da, see, it doesn't, it doesn't fit in the front. So I'm guessing you just don't need a sleeve if you use this pouch or this front pocket designated for an iPad mini. Big heads up, okay? So on the inside, I have it relatively full. I had the winter gloves laying right here. Here is a water bottle. This is full size. This is a 16.9 fluid ounces. This is a very standard size. And I have my pouch and now it's empty. So that's kind of shocking maybe, right? It doesn't feel like it can fit a lot. Um, I love pouches. Everybody who's ever seen my videos, I always talk about pouches. Lately I've been using the Umaraji clutch for like everything for my everyday stuff. Here's um, a little tin with some Altoids in it. And on the inside I have it pretty full. But these are the things that I really, really want on me. I sometimes have a pouch of things that would be kind of convenient and helpful like if I'm traveling where I don't want to like have to buy it at an airport or anything. But this is stuff like... I'm going from Walgreens to home and I want them on me, like these things on me. Pen, tissue, hand sanitizer, some lipstick, business cards, and some extra gift cards. But one thing I want to mention about this, hopefully I don't forget, is that this front pocket pouch actually isn't the best for pouches. It, you almost can get a lot more if you don't use pouches and you just kind of layer things in the bag as they go up, maybe with how frequently you use them. Um, I have a lot of larger bags in my collection and so pouches really help you not lose things because they can just scatter throughout the bag. But this one, because there's so many pocket options, the back 
the, the pouch here and then just back in here. You can really keep your things more organized. So um, that was one scenario that fits. Can you kind of see it? I don't think you can see everything on this side of my camera. This viewfinder thing is so helpful. Um, okay, one thing, a girl online, she was like, I love that you put your file effects, my A5 file effects in all my bags because it helps for size reference. So here's an A5 file effects. It actually doesn't close. So no A5 file effects, which is a bummer, but I didn't buy this bag. I just borrowed it. If you like use things like smaller water bottles, you might be able to get more in there. Um, we already talked about the iPad mini sleeve. Here's the front. Wait, this is a long trifold wallet. So that can fit in this front pocket really easily. It can fit in the back here very easily. Uh, a lot of people from Saddleback, Saddleback Leather fans have this as their wallet. Um, here's a moleskin. Moleskinny. Uh, obviously fits perfect standing up. Uh, and could fit in the front really well. It's still close, yeah. Um, those things fit, um, more skinny. And uh, let me end the video about, well, end the review on this bag with the uh, a couple of things that I love and a couple of things I don't really like. So um, the things that I love, it's really easy to open. Yay! The top handle is so very convenient. It is very light. Um, that is a very cool thing. I would see this bag being more of like an all day bag where you are walking around the city and you don't really want to have that weight on you. Um, it has a very slim profile which is nice. It looks very proportionate on my body and I'll show myself modeling it at the end of the video. But um, I also like that it's pretty gender neutral. I see this more like a kind of like that book bag Indiana Jones look. Um, but not too feminine, not too masculine. And uh, it does stand on its own. That's kind of a pro, you know, if you have it on the cafe floor next to you. Um, and then I like a lot that it can fit a water bottle. I always have water with me. I have kind of changed my preference with water bottles. I tend to have like one of those thermos that have ice in it um, and water and leave it in my car. But if I were like walking around the zoo all day, yeah, I need one of these. It's very expensive to buy water at the zoo. Have you noticed? That is completely off topic. Okay. But things I don't like, I'm not really able to use my pouches, like my pouches that I like to organize things with with this. Um, it kind of helps <laughs> because I have so many bags. I tend to rotate my bags throughout a week and I like pouches because I can just empty the bag and put it in the next one. And I'm always running behind. And my husband's waiting in the car and I can just instantly switch bags. So it's a little bit of a bummer that it can't hold a lot of pouches, but if you're not somebody who switches bags a lot, then you obviously don't have that problem. This bag, I would say, has more structure, and to me, that's a little bit of a negative. I really like slouchy bags. I actually, uh, it's not, it's not anything official at all, but I did sketch an idea and sent it to Saddleback Leather, and, uh, maybe they will like it. Maybe. I have a, I've seen a lot of bags. I know what I like. But I like slouchy bags. So this one has a little more structure, and maybe that's your cup of tea, but it's not mine. Um, I do wish that the closure was somewhat adjustable. It can't really be with this kind of closure. Um, but one thing that they could have done was give it a little extra room. I feel like when this is really full, it's a little bit tight to close right here. Um, it, that might come with time when the leather stretches and really relaxes. But I felt like my hobo always had, like, the flap is going really far down and really can secure if it's very full. And I always have this thing so full. Alright, and then um, I have changed a little bit of what I carry. I have this smaller Nikon camera. Um, I wanted something that I could have that was really portable and small, but I could take better pictures. And so now that I'm carrying a camera, I can't actually use this bag because the camera doesn't fit. And it's a very small camera. Um, here, let me show you. This is the case for it. You can kind of see 
it's not that big. It's what I'm using to record myself too. Anyway, see, all these negatives are like very personal negatives. I'm a pouch person. I like less structure. So <laughs> obviously you can't take these as your negatives, but this is my review. If you have a review, you should make a YouTube video. Everybody does it now. Um, but anyway, it was a really fun trial to borrow this from a friend. Uh, but I don't know if I'd buy it for myself, but I was happy that I could provide a lot of opinions for you because there's no stores for Saddleback Leather and so sometimes, I mean, this sounds really cocky, doesn't it? Sometimes my review is all that we really have to decide on a bag, but that also brings me to, there's this Facebook group that I always mention and I always get questions. If you search on Facebook, uh, Saddleback Leather and other buy slash sell group, what can happen is it's a closed group, you request to be part of it, um, if you're spam, they won't accept you, but then once you get accepted, you can really meet a lot of great people, you can ask any questions, I would say 99% of the time everyone's nice, we all have our moments, but um, Mike Allen is the administrator for it, hi Mike, how are you? And he put this together a couple years ago, and I've loved it. I mean, I didn't know about it when I first tried Saddleback Leather, but um, I'm so glad that I met that community of people, and both women that let me borrow these bags are from that group. So uh, that is a place that you can go to get a lot of opinions. My reviews only can be so much. I'm a woman. I don't have a diaper bag for my baby. I don't carry a big laptop. Um, so... I just want to put that out there. Okay, so now I'm going to model the bag and then stay tuned because we will talk about um, tobacco leather in just a moment. All right, hello. So I'm 5'5", five five, and uh, here's the bag on my frame. The buckle is like hitting just behind my shoulder blade. Um, I think it would depend on your height, but it is super adjustable. The excess strap is right here into this loop. And there it is, crossbody. I guess I can show you shoulder. Maybe I'd have to adjust it to make it shorter. But here it is. Isn't that nice? Okay. There you go. See you guys later. Hi everybody, welcome back. We're going to talk about the tobacco color on this bag. I received this bag and I was surprised by the darker color. And it still does look like tobacco on camera. I see in my little viewfinder that it looks like tobacco. And it is tobacco. It's just kind of different. And I was trying to figure this out. And I even asked that group I mentioned on Facebook. I said, guys, do you, did I get a dud? Like, why is this so dark? Like, why is there no variation in coloring? And more people were sharing their bags. And I reached out to Saddleback. And I'm like, okay, Saddleback, you know, what's going on? I thought tobacco was this more of like a warm, you know, reds, orange color in the Brown family and they did write me back. So I want to re read what they told me and then I'm going to show you my versions of tobacco that I own. Sounds good? Yeah. Okay. So they said that tobacco is going to be out of all their four colors, chestnut, dark coffee, brown, tobacco, and black. Tobacco is going to be the most inconsistent color and that is because there are no dyes added. To the hide. So um, because they can't control that color formula, the colors all vary and there's different reasons they vary. So they're never going to be consistent. They always will vary. Uh, there's so many factors. There's humidity in the air is a factor to tanning hides. Um, uh, humidity in the air when the hide is drying, that's a factor. The dew point of the air is a factor to the color humidity of the hide when the wax is being poured over it. Um, it varies because of the type of cow, the age of the hide, how many hides were in the drum at the time it was in the drum, 
temperature of the air when the wax is applied at the end. So that's pretty intense to me. I've never been to a tannery. Dave from Saddleback Leather did a really extensive review or video about tanning um, leather in a tannery. And it was really great. Maybe I'll link that in the description box below. But uh, I did not realize that so much went into like how many factors can change your tobacco leather. So as I said earlier, it's like consistently inconsistent and that's to me, I don't know. I don't know how I felt about it because on their website when you buy something you actually don't see the exact bag you're buying. You're seeing like their stock photo and then you get a bag. And I've had a lot of great success with the colors I've gotten straight from the manufacturer and I've had success buying these bags used. So the pro to buying them used is you can actually see the color either through eBay or the Facebook buy sell group. But um, but then there's the negative is that uh, it's maybe a used bag and it has a patina that you didn't put on it or it could have a smell or it could have too many scratches. All those things are from the used market. So uh, this is all information. I don't really think I have a full on opinion. I need people to feel with me. I wasn't the biggest fan, I guess, of this color. But I wore this bag for, you know, three weeks, and I still got tons of compliments from people. So it's almost like people who don't know Saddleback Leather are still in love with the color. It's just if I'm, I, maybe I'm a super fan, I don't know. I feel like because I know a lot, I can have a lot of opinions. Um, but it, it's nice to know that it's not necessarily a quality issue. It's more of just the way leather is made and how Saddleback leather approaches that and um, I would say there's no issue with quality hardware is awesome stitching is awesome still 100 year warranty so that's a mouthful but that's what I learned so let me show you some other leather colors that I have the tobacco color yeah okay so I have a viewfinder above this little camera look at the huge difference in this this is was this my first tobacco piece this or my hobo. But this is probably from the end of 2014. And this is what I would call like their yellow green family of brown. I'm an artist, so there are tints to everything. I And this one I think is almost like a brown neutral because if you jump to my Oh, let's get the Let's get this guy right there. This is probably my most popular review on this bag. Let's throw all this on the floor. Okay. <laughs> I'm filling up this frame. Okay. Do you see all these amazing colors? Maybe I should do it like this. Maybe like this. Okay. So this medium simple came into my life beginning of 2015 maybe March of 2015 and I would say that this tobacco color is like more of the red orange family because if you see like there's more yellow in this and this is more red orange but then between these two guys I feel like this tobacco is more like a neutral cool tones so what are your primary colors yellow red and blue and they're not obviously adding any color to this hide that's what they said but a lot goes into the factors, and I listed those. But um, even the type of cow, that kind of threw me. I was like, yeah, I guess different cows would have different kind of leather once they are, <laughs> once they become leather. Okay, so uh, one texture and feeling from this bag is that it's a little bit more high and low in variation and values. The oils come to the surface a little bit easier. Um, but this one has more of like a soft velvety touch. I felt like this one is a little more structured. I would not say it's plasticky, but it doesn't have like when I would go like this with my finger, it's not showing this velvet texture to the leather. And then this guy, I think from late 2014, he had the same kind of, it has the same texture as well. So I see that this is the most current t tobacco color, but who knows what's going to happen once they get a whole nother cow or a different herd comes in or I mean please comment below if you have different thoughts and 
share your knowledge. I don't think that I need to be the one that only has this opinion. Tell me what you know. What have you heard? Um, even if you're a leather maker, let me know what you find out. So, all right, here's two more tobacco. That's my hobo. That's my book bag. Look at this one. I, okay, guys, I love tobacco. Tobacco was my favorite color for a really long time. Now I like black. Can you see the black? And uh, this one's chestnut right here. But um, see the difference here? This one's more in that yellow family. This is more in the red family. I feel like these might be very similar. No, this one more looks yellow and this looks more a little red and anyway what can I tell you so uh, tobacco <laughs> tobacco to me is more of a type of leather for a certain kind of personality I'm a pretty uh, casual person I'm I think I'm funny I think I am but that's up for debate. And so I just think I don't have a corporate setting, so I always lean towards tobacco. It's just, to me, just, it photographs really well, it feels really good, all that stuff. But, um, if you hate all the drama of the different colors, then maybe you are like a chestnut person and you like things a certain way, because I don't feel like chestnut has ever changed. Uh, Dark Coffee Brown had some drama back in the 2012s, and now what it is, is, uh, I think it's consistently coming out this color, which is very lovely. Very lovely. And then obviously black is super consistent. So, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about the tobacco conversation. Um, I see myself, maybe if there's a certain bag I really like, I could see myself waiting to see if it's used or buy it on the used market just so I have a particular color. But my, also my uh, leather bag collection is quite full. And so I don't see myself really having to replace this one or this one. And I love these colors. So now you know. I think that's it. Okay, did we do it? Oh, oh, this is something. Hold on. I have a question for you all, and I'd love for you to comment below if you want. But... I'm not sure what video I'm going to do next. I haven't decided. So I have three ideas. And you can say, Danae, do all three. Or you can say, I like this one or this one. So the first idea is, would you like to see a collection video of all my bags? Because I actually don't just own Saddleback Leather. I own a handful of other leather brands. But I don't do reviews on them because I don't really feel like there's a big interest. But I wonder if you want to see them. Maybe not a review of them, but just see them. So a bag collection video, and then uh, or a video about how to buy a leather bag. I have a lot of experience with eBay and this buy sell group, and questions to ask and things to make sure you're looking out for. Or number three, would you like to see a video on the saddleback leather bags? I will never ever bell, or ever sell, but they're like the bags and some accessories. So I do sell a lot of saddleback leather bags, but some I'll never let go. So do you want to see a video on that? And be sure, subs <laughs> be sure to subscribe because I will be doing the tablet leather bag here in the next couple days and I don't want you to miss that. So thanks again. I'll see you guys.